So the question is, my um, opinion on the Virgin Galactic way of launching to space versus all these others and what I think what's going on. Uh, it, it's following a fairly typical pattern of uh, we want to try and develop a new technology that we think will serve us as a society. And, or, and, and for geopolitical reasons we do it, for scientific reasons we do it, but whatever, our big government organizations fund Sputnik and then fund the American program and Canada was the third nation on earth and we put a satellite up to look at to the magnetic field and the upper atmosphere um, but the customer was purely the government and um, at some point when can you start to privatize it when when can you take what is purely a government in, uh, customer and make a private citizen or even maybe a private company as the customer? And that happened for unmanned spaceflight decades ago. Private companies launch satellites for private companies on a regular basis for profit. So that model of, of uh, the government being excluded from it, that happened in, uh, in commercial unmanned spaceflight a long time ago but it hasn't really happened in human spaceflight yet. And the, the limitation is still the safety of it and therefore the cost of it. So what Richard Branson set out to do is, is there a way to get people to space and back safely and bring the cost down where you don't have to be a billionaire to fly, where you just have to be an, a very affluent person? Sort of like early commercial aviation, where your average person didn't go flying on the airlines in the 20s, but the wealthy could or maybe even early big ships, steamships. And uh, he's got a little airplane that just, or a space plane that'll get dropped from a big ship, goes straight up in a rocket engine, and then just lobs over the top, just gets to the bottom legal definition of space, maybe 105 kilometers up, spends a few minutes weightless, see the curvature of the world, see the blackness of space, then fall back into the atmosphere and land again. It's, it's an interesting engineering compromise. And it's hard to do, and there, there's risk involved, obviously, because one of the test pilots was killed uh, six weeks ago testing that vehicle. I don't know if he has a viable economic model or not. He wants to charge $250,000 or $300,000 a ride to take people up, which is a lot of money for most of the people in this room. It's a lot of money for me. But there are wristwatches that cost $250,000, and people buy them. And there are lots of luxury cars that cost $250,000 and people buy them all the time. So maybe there are enough people that can buy rides on Virgin Galactic to keep it funded as a, uh, as a private venture, I don't know. But somebody's got to make that first um, step, that, that first attempt to commercialize. Almost none, the oldest airline in the world is KLM, I think, and it was 1921. You know, airlines, most of them have got it wrong and have other airline models have taken over. So I doubt that Sir Richard has exactly the right model, but, but he's the one who's got the best model so far. And hopefully uh, the test pilots will figure that vehicle out over the next little while and make it safe enough that, commercial, that unqualified people are willing to get on board and go for a ride. We'll see. The fundamental technology is, is probably sound for what they're doing. You can't grow it. It'll never go orbital. That vehicle can't take the energy of orbital speed. It's like 70 times as much energy to be orbital as it is to do what he's doing. But maybe there's a niche there. And so I think it's an interesting first step. I support it completely. I think it's, it's, it's a first step towards as many people seeing the world for what it truly is and exploring it uh, as we can possibly get.